Happy Thursday. Today we're going to be drawing these um, warm, cozy mittens that you just saw on the screen. And of course, we're going to be drawing it in Inkscape. If this is your first time joining me, hi, I'm Nadoa from Paper Flow Designs. I'm a digital illustrator and I help mostly crafters, people who love to make craft uh, designs and projects using Silhouette and Cricut machines. I teach them, probably you, how to make drawings in Inkscape and how to use them to make crafts in Cricut and Silhouette and other cutting machines. So today, like I mentioned, we're going to be doing that. Uh, we're going to be drawing the, the mittens in Inkscape. Uh, I use a couple of things to help me do these drawings in Inkscape. I have uh, an ebook that teaches you all the shortcuts that I use in Inkscape because as we go along in the drawings, you'll see that I've been using like a lot of shortcuts and they won't show up on the screen, but these are all um, shortcuts that you can find in my ebook, which is, put that right here for you, it's called Inkscape Ready, Set, Go. And it's just all my tricks to master all the shortcuts for the keyboard and the mouse when you're using Inkscape. Let me jump right in and let's start drawing. So we're using Inkscape, like I mentioned, it is an open source um, graphic design software program. So that means you don't have to pay any monthly fee for it and it's open to anyone to use. First thing I'm gonna do is just using um, the circle tool, which you'll see on that right side, not right side, the left side toolbar um, is like some tools on there. And we're using the circle one first to make the base of our mittens. And then next, I'm gonna be drawing a little square. Don't worry about the colors because I will use the color dropper feature, which you see right there on the screen and change the color to match. So this is just gonna be forming like the top part of the mitten and the, the, the bottom of her half, like where, like close to your wrist. All right, and usually once I'm using the shapes tools in there, I like to take them and transform them to paths because um, I found that sometimes they don't transfer if you keep them as shapes, like when you're using the circle tool or using the, the squares, the stars, if you don't transfer them to or convert them to paths, sometimes they won't work well in, um, in your cutting machine software. So if you're using Cricut Design Space um, or Silhouette, what is it, Designer Edition, uh, yeah, sometimes they might not transfer well as an SVG. All right, so I'm just aligning those together. All right, and then I'm going to combine them. So we've got one solid piece. You can see all the nodes that are on there. I just double click to get the nodes. And then we can shape them to make more of like that mitten shape. I know this is not the usual time I'm on. Usually it's Fridays, um, a little later in the day. For me, it's like Fridays um, in the evening. For you, it might be Friday at noon if you're on the East Coast. But since it is a holiday week, I figured, okay, people are probably going to be, you know, getting ready to celebrate with their friends, families. So let me bump it up and do this. Draw with me session on a Thursday instead of a Friday. All right, so I've just duplicated that first shape that we made, and we're going to use this duplication as the thumb part of the mitten. I'm just going to shrink it up, draw it in, so I get it small enough where it'll be just the part for the thumb, and then I can move it into position on the side of the mitten. And as you can see, I just moved the, the rotation point, which is that, <coughs> oh, excuse me, that kind of like blue um, star that you saw. So you can see that there. 
I'm gonna keep rotating that until I get that into a position where I like it. So it actually looks like a mitten. So you've got the, the big section, that's for the four fingers. And then the small section, which is just for the thumb. I don't have my snapping uh, functions on. Sometimes I like to use them, sometimes I don't. And the snapping functions just, it's exactly like what it sounds like. Like you have two objects and you move one closer to the other. And depending on which snapping function you use, it'll just snap it to the next node. It'll just pull it close so it lines up. All right, so I have that lined up the way I like it. I'm gonna, I just duplicated that and put it off to the side because you know that I like to duplicate things and save it like kind of like my little draft like rough draft if you if you will so in case like i do something else with this version and i don't like it i can always go back to that rough draft version and have it on hand like once everything is done i can go ahead and you know erase all of the rough drafts if i um i don't need them anymore all right so now we're getting ready to draw the bottom of the mitten i'm just using a regular rectangle to do that This is actually part one of my new series that um, we're doing, which is the Winter Wonderland series. It's gonna be lots of different winter style drawings for you to do. So if you are not on my, my mailing list, if you're not part of my VIP group, you can go over to paperflowdesigns.com and sign up there, it's completely free. And you will get um, my email to let you know when the next Draw With Me session is starting. Most of the time it's on Fridays, but like this week, it's a holiday week. So it's on a Thursday instead and at a different time. So if you are on my VIP list, then you'll know. All right, so that is the bottom of the mitten that we are just using the nodes to kind of stretch it out to make it like a rounded feature. So even though I'm using a rectangle, I can still use that and then reshape it to form, um, you know, to kind of change the form the way I like it. And if you are just joining me, don't be afraid to say hi. Tell me where you're watching from. If you tried any of the drawings. And let me know if you are in Cricut or Team Silhouette. All right, I just want to round out the, the bottom part of the mitten because I don't like the way it has those, those pointy corners. I'm just have it as this blue color for now. It's not going to stay blue just so that you can see it. I think I'm gonna make this. If you can, if you already saw on the cover, so I did like um. I already did like you know I, I did this before, did the drawing before. All right, this peachy color is not exactly what I want, but I still want you to be able to see what I'm drawing. Because if I just make it white, then you won't really see the bottom of the mitten. but I can put a, a background on it. I think I will do that. So using the color dropper, I can get so many more colors, so I don't have to, I'm not limited to just the colors that are in the color menu bar below. You can just um, use the color dropper feature. And like how to explain it, like hold down and increase like the circle or decrease the circle to get the color that you want. And that'll just like allow you to have so many more shades of colors. All right, now I'm ready to put on like a little design on the mitten and we're gonna use the, um, what is this, the pen tool, the Bezier pen tool, which 
has been giving me issues and I keep saying that I'm going to look into my settings and see what's up with it. But then I forget. So I just want to make like a little zigzag um, design at the top of the mitten. I'm not seeing the color show up. Oh, there it is. All right, and then I want to duplicate that. But I want to stretch it out first, so it covers the whole width of the mitten. I can duplicate it. That is not showing up. All right, so I've duplicated the little waves, the little sweet wave. And because I'm using my pen tool, the Bezier pen tool, which I have still not <laughs> solved the settings issue on my Bezier pen tool, uh, for some reason I'm not seeing the fill color, but um, I can find another solution for that. Let me try to change the color using the color dropper. That's not gonna do it. All right. I don't mind like making mistakes as I'm on, on with you guys, because then you know you can see how we can find solutions for when we do mistakes or not even mistakes, we're just finding issues for things that come along and you don't have the answer to it right away or something's not working the way that you want it to work, there is almost always a workaround. Water. All right, so since this Bezier pen tool uh, is not working for me right now, let's try, let's try the pencil. Trying the pencil, but I think I had the same issue with the pencil last time. So the pencil just lets you draw like, you know, freehand style um, in Inkscape. Right, so that is giving me my little wave, looking good. And then I can duplicate that. Move it to the top because I like to have like things that have like a little pattern. So if I can make two or three of them, I like to have a pattern. And usually, like you know, if you have like knitted um, mittens, they'll have um, some kind of pattern on there in the knitting. So I want to kind of try to mimic that idea. And I have, I'm also going to include a design that we made uh, previously, which was a snowflake. And I've already, I have already imported it into this, into Inkscape, into this drawing. So it's on the side. So since the wave <clears throat> is um, th that we drew with the pen tool goes outside of the mitten, I want to cut it so that like, remember how I like to use that, that um, the cut paths feature so it works as like a cookie cutter and it just means that the designs are going to be lined up correctly. So when you go to use it in your cutting machine, you don't have a bunch of extra stuff to cut off and cut away. It gives you less stuff that you have to weed. That's not the way that I wanted to cut it. Let me just hit Control Z. I can undo, bring it back. All right, so I'm going to put the mitten, mitten away. I can see I have my mitten, the red part, and I have the design and the white part. And I just want to like cut into the the mitten. So I want the white part to not go past the the red part simplest way that I can explain it. 
because right now you can't necessarily see it, but it does extend off of, um, of the mitten. And especially like if you if you're gonna put this on, say say like maybe like a white t-shirt or something with a white background, it's fine. It doesn't really matter because you're not going to see it um, on the end product. But if you're gonna put this on, let's say like a wood slice. If you remember, I um, showed you guys how you can make wooden ornaments and things like that using wood slices. A wood slice is gonna have like a brownish background. So if you don't do this step of like you know cutting out uh, the paths to make it. Um, to make it lined up, when you go to cut out that little uh, white squiggly part, it's gonna extend and you're gonna see it on your wood slice or your darker background, which is not really what you want. So if you take the extra step to, um, to use a cut path feature, there's like different, there's different um, tools that you can use in the path uh, menu. I usually like to use the, the divide tool because then I'll just slice that up exactly the way that I need it. And then I can delete any extra bits that I don't want. So you can see now that there's like those little um, dotted lines. I've got a bunch of extra pieces that have been cut away that I can just select. I can just like click and drag over where they were and then I can delete them. So that'll just leave you with like a nice clean SVG, a nice clean cut file um, when you're done. All right, if I move that away, you see how it's now perfectly aligned uh, to the mitten. So the ends of the white, um, of the white design of the squiggly design matches up to the edge of the mitten. One thing I will say is I don't wear mittens anymore, um, not just because I'm not an adult, but because I live in a warmer climate now. So gloves and mittens are like a thing that's really from another lifetime ago, basically. From my childhood and even like my kids, like they, when do they ever wear mittens? Like, I guess when we go skiing, but we don't go skiing that often. So they have one and there'll be like rare days where it gets cold enough to that you need to wear gloves here. I mean, it's cold, but you don't necessarily need to wear gloves all the time. Although my son has been asking me for gloves because of, I don't know, I think like everyone's wearing it when they're at recess. All right, right now I'm just trying to draw a background using the, the pencil tool because it worked on the, the squiggly line that I did for the mitten. For some reason it's not showing up. But not to worry, I'm gonna find another solution. Right, the bottom of the mitten um, is still there. Change the color back so you can see it again. And then I'm thinking, okay, what am I gonna do to put the background on here? I'm just use something really simple like a square. So I'm gonna draw this blue square and drop it to the back so that the mitten will be in front. So since the pencil tool wasn't working, because I just wanted to make like like an organic kind of um, like paint splotch um, to put on the back of the the mitten, but that was not working with the pencil tool. So even though I had it worked when I used it to make the pattern on the mitten, I don't know why it wasn't working when I wanted to draw the background. But not to worry, I still found another solution. And I'm not gonna keep it just a square because I just think that's kind of boring. 
So I want to kind of like double click, get the nodes, and then change the shape of the square. But this is another reason why, you know, if, like I said, if I make mistakes on here, it's fine because I get to show you how you can still use the shapes to get what you want uh, in different ways. So even though the pencil tool wasn't working the way that I wanted it to, to give me like that kind of, you know, circular wavy background, I can still use the square to get my um, background in a different way. And then I'll just try to round out those nodes. I don't want it to have like a little point. And I kind of like the way that looks. It kind of looks like the mitten is in like a little um, snow globe, like the top of a snow globe. Or even like on the top of, um, what am I thinking of? It's not a wreath, but like a, a like those um, door decorations that I see people making. All right, so now I can make the bottom of the mitten white again. And I can go scroll over to the left where I already have this snowflake that um, that I previously made. I already imported that in, and if this is your first time seeing that snowflake if you've never seen it before it's actually a snowflake that i made in another draw with me session um, if you are curious about that one you can scroll back uh, to the videos wherever you're watching this on um if you're on like facebook or something it's going to be there in the video playlist uh, there might even be a way for you to search to look for the snowflake and if you are on my blog you can just Type um, how to draw a snowflake in the search bar, and then you'll find this video. So you see that, like, even this, if it's like an old drawing that you've done, you can still incorporate it into new designs. All right, so I have combined them all into one. You can see that is all combined. And then I can just duplicate it. Because we can't have just one mitten, we need two of them to make a pair. And then flip that over, of course, after it's um, duplicated. So instead of having to like redraw the whole thing over again, and it's not even going to look the same if I, you know, draw it all from from the beginning. We'll draw the second one, you know. You know what I mean. So the right side and the left side look the same because we just use the duplicate feature to duplicate it. I'm just going to move one a little bit lower than the other one so it's not exactly lined up. And then from here, we just have to draw the string that's going to connect them. Because usually, right, I'm going to give the pencil tool another try. Because it worked on, it worked to make the design, little white squiggly design on the mittens. Let me see if it's going to work to make that little, um, that little cord, that string that connects the two mittens. No, nope, I'm not seeing that. Right, I think I'm going to take some time afterwards to really go into my settings and figure out what's going on here. But in the meantime, I'm going to find another solution because I'm still going to, still going to draw the cord. don't know exactly how yet, but I'm going to find a way. Because the pencil tool is not doing what I want it to do. I mean, I could leave the mittens as is, but I don't want to. Because I think it just looks, well, it just looks nicer when you have a little cord and it 
it reminds me of like, like I said, when my kids were little and we did go on like ski trips. Well, I wouldn't say a ski trip. We went like for the day to go skiing and I am not a skier. Like I've tried it and Lord help me, it's it's not it's not my calling. It looks so much fun though when everyone else is doing it. Like I see like, you know, the kids and like you know, families are like pushing by me and I'm like, oh I wish one day I could be able to do that. But it is not in the cards yet. Maybe one day. But anyway, what was I talking about skiing for? Oh, because um the kids would have mittens attached to their snowsuits. Which is like just the best idea ever. All right, so we're gonna use a circle. We're gonna use just the regular circle tool, the same thing as how we started out drawing them the min the mittens. Ah, words today. Um using the circle, I'm going to make the cord with that. So I'm just gonna like make a long oval. Double click to get those rotation arrows. Move it around, change the color. If I change it to white, will you be able to see everything? Let's see. As long as it stays on the blue background, you can see it. Yeah, put it back to black while I'm drawing it so you can see the whole thing being drawn. All right, so I'm double clicking to get the nodes and then I can just shape the string using the nodes. I'm gonna pull down the nodes. I'm going to add a few nodes, of course, because I want this to have a few like um, twists and turns. Or instead of having twists and turns, um, I'm gonna draw the first part. I'm gonna draw the first part of the string Using um, using the notes, and then we're gonna duplicate it. Let's add another node. I want to shape that a little bit more. And I like using the, I forget the name of that feature, but it's like, uh, if you if you look at the menu bar, the tools bar at the top, and there's like functions that have like a little blue circle. So I like using the one that's like curved with a blue circle inside of it to just change the node. Um, it's a, it, just, it just curves the node. So if I don't want a, a right angle, and I don't want to like, sit there and like you know tweak it and move it around to try to get it to be like curved and circular i can just click that that um function and it just changes the node to a curve all right i still want a little bit more curvature in this cord Let's take those nodes, move it around. Yeah, because I want it to kind of look, you know, look like a string. So you can see a lot of this, it's not complicated. It's just, you know, based on your preference of like how much time you want to spend um, playing around with the nodes and moving things around. And I don't want it to be the exact same size um, completely like from the bottom to the top either. Because then that kind of loses like that that organic feeling of it. All right, so once I have that, 
drawn. So I've got one side of the string. And since, you know, the girl loves a shortcut, we're going to duplicate this to make the other side. And then we'll just flip it around. And we'll move it so it touches the second mitten, but still I want it so that the bottom parts of the cords are going to be touching each other. You'll see what I mean in a second. All right, so I can rotate that. Because since this is um, a part of the design that I've duplicated, I don't want it to look, I mean, obviously it's exactly the same, but I don't want it to look immediately like exactly the same. So I'm trying to play around with how I'm gonna position that. All right, now once I have those overlapping, I can combine them into one. I don't want to have two pieces of that string. I want it to be one piece. I can combine that and then I'll zoom in to get rid of those extra nodes that I don't want. This might look like, oh, it's time consuming. It's not really. It's just, you know, depends on like your level of effort, how you want things to look. And also think about the more nodes that you're going to have, the more that you're going to be dealing with when you upload it to, um, to Cricut or to Silhouette. And I mentioned this last week about designs that have curves in it. Um, if you are using Inkscape to make your SVGs, I have found that sometimes um, if you need to have a, was it a DXF file, you actually do want more nodes around the curves because otherwise sometimes the DXF files don't, they don't transfer well. All right, so the string is the way that we want it. I'm just using the color dropper feature to change the color to match the bottom, the bottom of the mittens. Zoom out a little bit so you can see that. All right, so we have combined the string with the bottom of the mittens. And that, let me show you. So everything there is combined. I'll move it out, move it back on so you can see one piece. And that is how we draw these cozy little mittens in Inkscape. So I hope you enjoyed that. That is just part one of the three part series of the Winter Wonderland drawing series. So every week, um, we're going to have another lesson on for you, another draw and chat with me session. If you like these, please share this to other friends or crafters that you know would be interested in SVGs and um, you know, seeing how they all come together. And join me again next week. If you want to be notified about it beforehand, go over to Paperflow Designs. That is P-A-P-E-R-F-L-O Designs, plural, dot com. And you can sign up to my VIP list, which is just my email list. But you'll be notified first to know when's going to be the next drawing session, what we're going to be drawing. And, um, you yeah, know, just send me a sh uh, shout out. Say hi, you know, let me know if you like it. Let me know if you have any suggestions. I'm always open to comment. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. And I'll see you again next week. Bye.